everyone. Hello, everybody, and welcome to our Meet the Students webinar as part of our CAO Information Evening. Why wow, it's great to see so many people coming in. Hello, everyone. Um, I'll just give a few seconds so everyone can kind of come in and nobody misses anything. And um, there's a good few kind of coming in. That's great. Oh, it's so good to see everyone. Um, not that we can actually see you, so don't worry if anyone's thinking we're in your camera. <laughs> Um, just a little bit of housekeeping for everyone to know. If you have any questions, the Q&A is at the bottom. If you place them there, um, my colleague Emma Shine will be in the background um, replying to some questions and we'll take some questions on the floor to the students as well. If there's anything you'd like to see. We're just waiting on one more student. He's having some technical difficulties, but we'll introduce him once he gets in. So I guess I'll kick it off. And um, my name is Deirdre Carroll, and I work in the admissions office here at Maynooth University. So um, I can answer any questions that you have on kind of courses and stuff. And for the rest of the evening, I'd recommend going to any kind of course that you're interested in, in studying. I would recommend going to that talk and kind of just seeing what you think of the subject. Would you like it a bit more? And then come along to our open day and go to the lectures itself and see what you think about it there. So to kick off our Meet the Students webinar, what we're going to do is I'm going to let all of our lovely student ambassadors who are here this evening introduce themselves and we'll be taking your questions. I'll be asking them, them some questions and it's a little bit more informal as in if you want to know about their commuting or what schools they came from or what subjects they studied and what are their modules like, what's a lecture. These are the type of questions that we can ask um, in this webinar when we have our students here on the floor. So I guess I'm going to go around my kind of screen and then I'll let, I'll kind of call out names and you can all kind of introduce yourselves. So Peter, you're first up on my screen. Uh, yeah, my name's Peter and I'm studying electronic engineering. Um, it's a four-year course, so it's a bachelor's degree and uh, the code is MH304. Uh, yeah, I'm in second year now. Um, Brilliant. Thanks so much, Peter. And then Grania, you're next to my screen. Hi, everybody. Um, my name is Grania. I am in final year in LLB Law. So that's just pure law on its own. And the code for that is MH501. I did transfer from MH101 to the arts program, um, where I did law, criminology and critical skills. Thank you, Grania. And Ben, you're next up. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Ben. I'm an MH109 uh, Media Studies student. So I do, uh, I major in Media Studies and I do a minor in Marketing and I am a second year at the moment. So, yeah. Bob, thank you. And Ellen, you're next up. Hi, everyone. I'm Ellen. I'm a third year student, but that is a final year student in MH101 Arts. I study Music and Maths. They're my two subjects. And unlike Grania, I transferred into MH101. I started off in Pure Music, MH103. So we have two transfer students, but two different ways of transferring. And then finally, Sinea. Hi, everyone. My name is Sinea. And like Grania, I'm in my final year of LLB Law. Um, I'm with Grania, so we're in the same class, uh, same lecture, and the code is MH501 as well. And then Craig will be joining us shortly um, and he is a business and management student, but I'll let him introduce himself when he comes along. Um, I guess as well, for anyone that's that's joined us this evening, this isn't a lone kind of event where you get the opportunity to, to chat to students. We have um, a dedicated social media channels. Oh, here's Craig just coming in. I'll just finish this and then we'll introduce you, Craig. Um, so we have dedicated social media channels, Minute CAO. And there we have an Instagram, a TikTok. Um, we have a Snapchat too, if you want to DM any questions. We have Facebook and we have Twitter too. But I guess like the... The, the most informative, maybe one TikTok, obviously for your short videos, but as well Instagram, because our student ambassadors here, they take over our Instagram and you can ask them questions and you can directly contact them um, there. And they, they have kind of control of the channel for however long they're doing the takeover for. You can also, you know, message us there with any kind of quick questions you want to ask. If you'd prefer that, then then sending an email or even if you would like to keep up to date with it, up to date with anything, like say for example, the early bird deadline on the 20th of January, we'll be reminding you of that kind of stuff. So it's an easy kind of follow to keep on top of kind of things for the year. So that's Minute CAO. Um, as well as that, we actually have the UniBuddy app as well on mu.ie forward slash ask a student. So mu.ie forward slash ask a student. And that's like an app where we have a load of student ambassadors there and you can ask them questions. So say, for example, if somebody 
one of the participants in the crowd I'll just get a hands up hand just put your hand up on the in the audience if you're thinking of doing primary school teaching for Apple. Okay, cool. We have someone. Okay, bro. So say, for example, for that member of the audience, if you would like to um, chat to a student about that, if you want to speak to a primary school teaching student and you want to ask her what her lectures are like, you can, her name is Orla, as a student ambassador that's on that channel. You can message her there. Okay, so that's mu.e forward slash ask a student. Craig, we didn't get let you introduce yourself. So I'm just going to let you introduce yourself quickly as well. Sorry, um, hi, my name is Craig. Some management uh, here at Manute, it's MH404. Um, sorry, I was late, <laughs> a bit of technical issues and a bit of unstable Wi Fi. So um, I'm doing, doing the best I can with what I have. So um, yeah, that's nice to me. No, that's brilliant. Thanks so much for joining us, Craig. Really appreciate it. Um, we all have technical difficulties from time to time anyway, don't we? We all get it. <laughs> so I guess the first question I want to ask everyone is, why did you choose Manute? Like, out of all the universities in Ireland, what drew you towards Manute? So, Ben, I'm going to put that question to you first. All right. Hi, everyone. Um, so, why I originally chose Manute? Um, I originally, when I was um back in kind of a uh, junior cert TY, um, I was like really dead set on a like career that Manute just didn't offer. Um, it was a very like specific thing and I knew like which course I wanted to go to which college and it was not Manu. Um, and I was like so dead set in it and then I had a mental breakdown um, somewhere along the line where I was kind of like is this really what I want to do I don't know and I feel like everyone kind of has them when they're deciding their subjects and you know it's kind of all part and parcel of the process um, and I kind of started looking at other places and exploring other avenues and stuff that would potentially allow me to have more choice and more freedom in choosing later on rather than having a very specific course and um, where I felt like I was kind of stuck in that career for you know the rest of my life um, and during that process uh, during TY I visited um, Maduce and I came and I loved it um, I was just like and it's very cliche and um, I came and I loved it um, but um, I just came and I really loved like the vibe of the campus and the people and stuff like that and I kind of got a bit of a feeling that it was where I, I really wanted to be and um, I'd already submitted my fifth year options actually so um, I ran and really annoyed my guidance counselor to basically like revoke my application of my subjects and let me change it so I could do French essentially and um, since I had my course um, media studies uh, requires French so I changed my subjects so that when I got to sixth year um, and got to my CAO I could come to Manute so yeah it was just kind of the vibe and the people and also um, the media studies degree is a much more kind of broad ranging degree where I get to do um, a much kind of broader range of stuff and um, so I do kind of have that option still today if I wanted to change my mind or go down a different avenue and um, that I could so yeah Amazing, thanks. And Ben, you're from Wexford, isn't it? I am, yes. Yeah, I am cool. From Wexford, cool. What school were you in? Um, I was in FCJ Bunk uh, Is anybody Lodi, so. from that school? Raise your hand if anybody's joining us. Chance. From <laughs> Have they um, let me down? My yeah. fans haven't showed up now. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't be silly. Um, Sneha, why did you decide to um, study with us in Manute? Um, mainly because of the degree, to be honest, like I knew that I wanted to do law from quite an early stage in secondary school. Um, but I was quite conflicted on what college to go to because I'm from North Dublin. So I had a couple of options around me. But um, like Ben, after speaking to my gu guidance counsellor and just looking through the booklets and various open days, like I could just see that the range of modules and like the practical modules that Maynooth University offered, it really stood to me. I knew that I enjoyed public speaking and like um, the various modules. So for example, in LLB, you can do negotiation, dispute resolution, moot court, all of that really stood to me. And that's that's mainly why I chose Maynooth, but the people as well. Um, I didn't really realise that until I first showed up here uh, for my orientation day, but uh, the people really stand to Maynooth. And I really do think it's the people that make Maynooth what Maynooth is. But yeah, that's why I chose Maynooth University. Amazing. Thank you so much. And Ellen, all the way from Mayo, why did you decide Maynooth? Um, so I initially decided on Maynooth because of the music department. Um, so I came in, as I mentioned earlier, I came in originally in MH 103, which is the pure music course. And um, for me, uh, I was really looking for a music department that was recognized. And to be fair now, Maynooth uh, music department is very well recognized within the country and outside of it as well. 
Um, you know, we like to name drop sometimes Dermot Kennedy studied music in Maynooth um, and Emer Quinn, who won the Eurovision in uh, 1996. So, you know, we have a few few names to us as well, but it's a great place to get involved in terms of music. There's lots of different groups and choirs and then like student run societies. You don't have to study music to get involved in it, but it is a very musical campus. It was something that I knew. Um, and then as well, coming like Ben, I, I came here on an open day. Uh, I was in fifth year at the end of my fifth year and uh, I came along and I saw loads of the facilities and things. And uh, I did really fall in love with the place. I think it's a, a lovely place to study as well. Um, and on top of that, then the amount of choice that was offered. I mean, eventually I was going to go on and transfer. I didn't know it at the time uh, into a more broad degree. But the fact that that avenue was actually there in the first place, as opposed to going to some other colleges where from the very first year you're doing entirely same music. If I wanted to transfer at that point, then after first year, like I did, I would have had to repeat a year. But in Maynooth, that didn't have to happen. I didn't have to repeat a year. I could just go straight from first year of one course to second year of the next, which is great. You can tailor your own degree to you and you can choose as you go along, which is brilliant, really. Amazing. Yeah, I actually could just see that somebody's raised their hand in the participant list. I don't know if it's someone from Bunclody for Ben, um, but <laughs> so if you wouldn't mind, please put the question into the Q&A and we can kind of get to it that way. Um, it's just we don't really have in the webinar functionalities. It's not really um, we can't really unmute people and stuff, but we're so happy to answer the question. So please feel free to put into Q&A and, and honestly, we encourage kind of questions to come in as well. So my next, so thanks so much guys for those questions. My next kind of question is, what do you like most about your course? So Grania, from your legal standpoint, what do you like, what do you enjoy the most about your course as a LLB pure law student? So I really love the way I have the freedom to choose how I want to structure my degree. Um, for me, as like as you get through the years so in first year you don't really have a lot of um room to choose modules but as you get through the years you have a lot of opportunity to choose um different things and it kind of makes more of a designer degree nearly so I know I don't like uh commercial law that's just me I don't get on with it at all but I really love criminal law and then last year I discovered I'm actually really good at employment law so that is something that I never thought I would choose. My friends were like, I go on, I go on, it'd be great. Like, so now it's, I'm actually really enjoying the fact that I can choose what I, what I would prefer. Whereas normally that would freak me out entirely, but now it's, it's completely designer for me. So the choice that I made is completely unique to me. And that's what I love about it. Amazing. I love that. I think that's kind of something Ellen, you touched on as well as, I think one of the coolest things about Maynooth is kind of the options that are there for you and like and I can see everyone's like nodding their head in agreement like you're not super divine the second that you come in that Maynooth kind of gives you that that I guess that experience and, and it lets you kind of transform as you go on with your degree which I definitely think is like a big factor for Maynooth and I think you guys have all really demonstrated that as well and um, Peter some, something kind of different like what do you enjoy about electronic engineering? Uh, yeah so the, the engineering course in Maynooth is different because in other universities they usually offer um, a general year of engineering but this one's always just electronic engineering for the four years so that's that's one of the things I like about the course the most because if it's something you know that you like, the electronics, then I think it's much more beneficial to have it um, in the full four years because there's just so much stuff to cover in engineering. And um, yeah, there's also the option of masters in Maynooth. So that's good to have if you want to do that. And um, I think that that offers the, the off, um, that opens the, the choice of placement, work placement, if you choose that. So yeah, um, I always knew I liked electronics. So this course, Minute is the only university that offers four years of uh, pure electronics engineering. So that's mainly why I chose it. Um, it's great working in the labs and uh, doing practicals. I like that aspect of it. And um, uh, yeah, the department in engineering is actually in Minute is very small. Class sizes are like, um, 40 people in first year 
Oh, that's they'll, amazing. They'll, yeah, so they'll get smaller as the years goes on. You know, maybe some people transfer or other people uh, won't continue the course, but it's really good for questions with professors. You can ask them. Everyone knows each other in the department pretty much. And uh, it's really good for question for questions with professors if you need help with anything. So I actually yeah. love the electronic engineering building. I think it's gorgeous as well. It's just like you kind of have your own space, don't you? Yeah, that, yeah, that's actually something as well is that we have our own building, and um, there's yeah four labs in it, and I think about three classrooms. So everyone's always there hanging out, and you can talk to other years there or just do study in the classroom so it's good it probably kind of makes it a bit easier to make friends does it as well because you're kind of around each other all the time then yeah definitely yeah yeah, yeah every, we have a society as well for the electronic engineering oh fab. So, yeah pretty much we do events like soccer tournaments or basketball tournaments oh cool so That's cool. yeah you, you'll get to know everyone from the different years and it's it's great if you need to ask questions for assignments or exams Brilliant. And Craig, what do you like about your course? So for me, I kind of like my whole course in general and the modules and because business, business, as most people know, is quite a broad and subject. So really being able to define some um, aspects of business and really like dive in deeper um, to such a broad subject is super, super interesting to me. Um, of course, all the group projects. Now, sometimes people get, uh, some people some people don't like group projects. For me, I love talking. I love mingling with people. I love, you know, really sitting down with people that also have the same interests as you. Uh, I dare to get the best grades that they can get and really rather solve a problem or come up with an idea or really solve an, uh, an assignment. That kind of aspect of business is really important to me and I, that's the, the stuff I love and um, of course the selection of modules as well and um, just to go off what Rania was saying and um, I was going into second year and um, just from transferring from arts into business management and um, we get to choose these elective subjects so they're subjects that you voluntarily pick and um, when I was doing it there is some voluntary subjects that I chose, just for example, brand management and project management. And you don't have to do them, but if you really like business and you know kind of what kind of aspects you want to study in the future, it's a really good way to kind of get a taster of the course or the module. Amazing. That's that's great, Craig. Thank you so much. Um, do you know what a question is? There's a few questions in, and again, there's some kind of hands raised in the in the participants list. If you don't mind, please put it into the Q and A, and we can get to your question. So there's a, there's a few here, okay? So one of them, and I'm just going to take first seat, is about critical skills. So critical skills could be something that people haven't heard of before. So who's doing critical skills here in our group? So no Greg, Grania, anyone else? No, nope, that's it. Okay. Grania, it was actually in particular, the question was kind of towards law. Tell us about critical skills. The floor is yours. Um, so I did critical skills, law and criminology in my first year. So the way the arts degree is structured, you have to choose a, like at a maximum four subjects. So I chose two subjects of law, one subject of criminology and one subject of critical skills. So critical skills is teaching you how to be an academic in your university degree so it teaches you how to reference it teaches you how to write write an essay it teaches you what the difference is between different types of sources um I found it very beneficial um for me it also teaches you how to public speak which is something I found very beneficial and trust me if I hadn't taken that class then I would not be here now because I would be this little timid girl in the corner going oh my god I can't do this um but it just gives you that opportunity so the classes there's only like I think there's a maximum of like 20 or 30 people in them so it's very much like little classroom and you get to know everyone in your classroom really really well it's a lot of group work that you do and 
it is definitely a subject that I would recommend for everybody on MH101 to take because it builds up your kind of university life. It gives you that stepping stone from leaving cert to university. It's kind of like a how to college guide, isn't it? Like an academic, <laughs> academically. Um, and it does, you're right, it kind of shows you the differences between, um, it kind of shows you the differences between kind of writing your your essays in, in leave and search and then going to a different standard when you get to university and all of a sudden you need to reference so you need to say where you've gotten this piece of information you all these kind of tips and tricks for along that you will use throughout your degree I'm going to go to the Q&A now and I'm going to go through a few there's some kind of specific questions um for law that would probably be better placed towards the law department but if I come across them or if I see them chat I'll say that to you okay just we're kind of more general for the students okay because they're just kind of talking about their experiences as students so um for the law students so just a question I'm planning to do law and criminology this year how would you deal with the stress of assignments Nair, do you want to take it yeah, yeah, no problem. Um, I think that's something that no one figures out. Um, <laughs> if I'm being honest, like I'm in final year and I still I still do get stressed over my assignments. Um, but something that I've worked with over over the four years is um just just planning to be honest like I I'll be honest I don't start my assignments the day that they're being assigned I'll probably take like depending on how long they've given I'll probably take two 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 and a half weeks to research and um, I would spend a core bit of my preparation time doing research because I do think research is everything for an assignment and um, so it, during that time once you break it into different study sessions it does take the um the stress and the fact that it's so overwhelming like especially in first year I found it extremely overwhelming uh like Deirdre mentioned going from I did history in leaving cert going from that standard of writing to a legal legal standard of writing first it was very hard but just breaking it into chunks and taking my time with it really helped and like I would honestly recommend getting a planner and just planning your essay out like do not write a law essay without a plan and um, and work on that plan like I changed my plan of how I'm gonna how I'm gonna write this essay to like the day before and that's okay like you don't need to have everything all together all the time but it does help to approach the essay with a plan or any any sort of assignment I keep saying essay because um mostly like all my modules are continuous assessments so I do get examined mostly through essays and written submissions and so on so um again like it's it's to believe in yourself and to know that you don't need to get it all together in first year like it comes to you throughout the four years and I can definitely say looking back like that I've learned through writing different pieces of work so uh just take it easy and I would say get a planner so that would help you plan that's a great tip uh, so yeah, and actually on that another question was does studying, studying law require a lot of reading uh yeah I won't lie there there is a good bit of reading but again it's about breaking it up usually how lecturers approach it within the law department is that they release a weekly reading list prior the week before basically um so you would have around like four to seven days depending on when they release it in the week to cover that reading and sometimes um lectures are split up in the sense that you might have one on Monday and you might not have one till Thursday so if I can't cover all of it for Monday I would try do half and half and again like they do say what you need to cover they like if 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 a reading list has like 10 15 articles they might have two or three that they really need you to look at and everything else is additional reading so again I would focus on the starred ones on the ones that they're saying is important and then the rest if I have time I would look at one or two but again like if out of a 15 page reading list I wouldn't I wouldn't worry about getting everything done because the lecturers are aware of how long it takes um but yeah again breaking it up into chunks is ideal for a law degree um but that's what I'd say Deirdre that's a great tip thanks so much Naya um there's a question here and it's saying it's a weird question to ask and firstly I don't think this is a weird question to ask at all I think this is perfectly normal um but it's 
how do you, you guys come to a final conclusion and course that was right for you? And like, how did you sorry, come to that conclusion? And this person is stuck between general science or psychology degree. I'm actually just going to say to that person at this point, um, like it's very early, it's January. The most important thing at the moment is just to, to fill in your, or not to fill in, just to apply to the CAO so that you get that early bird discount rate. I would then sign up for every single open day that you can that you can go to that you can physically go to and then I would go to the talks and any workshops or anything that relates to the the degrees you're kind of thinking of and then when you go to those talks you have to remember that the people delivering those talks are are lectures so going into that class is like going to a future lecture you're on the campus can you see yourself firstly being on this campus secondly can you see yourself being in this class does the content that the that the um lecture is speaking about does that like excite you is that something you want to study you know you're not in your leavings or anymore that you're to, that you have to study these certain kind of subjects now you you were specializing in something that you're really going to like and when you study it it's something that you are passionate about and you want to do well in. so go to those talks and see which one which content kind of makes you a bit gives you more of a buzz and which one you're kind of more interested in but I might put that question to you Ellen considering the fact that you kind of changed your mind as well when you kind of came in yeah um I mean I do think it's very hard to know for certain you know coming straight out of out of school or if you've taken a year out and you're kind of wondering you know when am I going to be ready to make the decision it it all does come down to like Deirdre said absolutely play in the field seeing what's there for you and then kind of trusting your gut and thinking what really excites me what am I really passionate about and what do I want to work on work in ideally until I retire that's kind of the the point isn't it but I mean for me I came into college in a specialized course saying I want to be in music and that's it basically <laughs> um and I, yeah, I, I decided halfway or more than halfway through my second, through my first year that maybe I did want to um, keep my second subject, which was maths and possibly work there or possibly work in some sort of setting where I can combine the two, um, which is what a lot of people do in arts anyway. So keeping it general can be a good thing as well, um, but it really does just come down to trusting yourself and also being patient with yourself and realizing that you don't have to rush any decision. Uh, the beauty of the CAO is that you have 10 options. <laughs> you can put down whatever you like and you can change your mind up until very, very late on. So don't put too much pressure on yourself either. These things will come with time and uh, you'll be all right in the end, I'm sure. That's a lovely piece of advice, Alan. I think that was like a motivational talk. That was brilliant. So thank you so much for that. That was that was brilliant. Um, and as well, like Ellen often does takeovers on the Manuteo Instagram channel that we were talking about. So if do follow the page because Ellen has done a few takeovers there before and she will be on it again. So if you've any particular questions for Ellen, like she's brilliant at kind of explaining it and going through it. So so do kind of follow that. So thanks so much, Ellen. That was brilliant. Um, one of the questions, and I might put this to Grania, is um, transferring. Is it easy to do? And do most students do it because they want to specialize in a particular area? So speaking from someone who has transferred, the, yeah, the question was, a few students mentioned transferring, is that easy to do? And do most students do it because they want to specialise in a particular area? Um, so transferring is really, really easy to do. Um, well, it was for me anyway. So each, um, there's a lot of different requirements for it. But specifically for me, it was that I had to pass all my modules and get a four, at least 40% overall. That is extremely achievable. So for the actual transferring, when you are registering for your second year, you get your um, offer to transfer. So as long as you meet your department's requirements. So for me, it was just that I had to pass all of my modules, which is 40% and everything. And I had to have an overall average of 40 percent um, in accounting I think that is a higher standard but that would that's the only one I know of I think that's 66 percent but I'm not totally sure on that one but um, for me it was relatively easy and you just 
click whenever you're registering then for your second year, then you click in the box to say you want to transfer. Thank you so much, Grania. And if anyone does have a particular question about a particular transfer, again, feel free to, to message us on that Instagram account that we were talking about, Monique CEO, or if you'd prefer to chat by email, you can email us at admissions at mu.e. Um, Craig, this question is for you. Did you, Craig, did you transfer from arts to business and management? Yeah, yeah I actually transferred um, from the arts degree into business and management. Okay, brilliant. This question's for you then. So, Craig, what did you do in first year arts? I'm just worried I might not get the full points for the business management. I like business, but not sure what other subjects I would need to be able to transfer into business management. Just in terms of the particular one, um, in terms of the requirements for that, there's a guide. If you go on to mu.ie forward slash prospectus, there's a first year subject guide there that goes through each course and um what you need to transfer over so what you need to do in arts to transfer over in first year but um i'll let you just just explain what subjects you decided craig in in first year and how you found the transfer process yeah so the transfer process for me anyway was really really easy as what ronnie was saying just to, just back her up there it's super seamless now um if you would have talked to me when i was in sixth year and um, i would have told you i had no idea what to do because I love business and I love accounting. I'm the very few people who like accounting uh, and economics. So I went into the arts degree. Now points didn't even cross my mind when I was when I was thinking of courses. And of course I had business management down on my CAO, but it comes down to I didn't know what I wanted to do when I was the first year. So that arts degree allows well allowed me to see what I liked. I think to transfer into the course that I wanted to do, whether that was accounting finance or business and management. So just to answer the question on what subjects I did, I did um, business management and um, economics and accounting and critical skills in first year. So to transfer into a, a business subject, you need to do economics or um, accounting. And you need to um, just pass all your, all your modules um, that year. So it is really, really easy and more or less you can take business management and economics and any other two subjects if you like once they class with each other. And um, so that's more or less what I do for sure. Thanks so much, Craig. And um, if anyone's interested in going in the arts route, I'd recommend definitely going to the arts talk. And then there's also another talk on business and law, which they'll probably be briefly going over the transfer route if you want to talk to them. Now, I'm just going to try and get a few. We have a good few questions kind of waiting. So I'm going to do quick questions. We'll get through kind of one of some of the like one word answers kind of questions. So Sneha, are lectures shared with MH501 and 502 and Arts 101 law students? Yeah, for certain modules and for certain modules as well. Perfect, thank you. And then Grania, how big are the law courses and how many people are in them? Um, law is quite a big subject in general. Yeah. So a lot. I, I wouldn't have a specific answer on Remember, that. No, you wouldn't. And uh, would you have tutorials as well? Um, yes, yeah, so you have three tutorials three times a semester. So it's one tutorial repeated three times, second tutorial repeated three times, third tutorial repeated three times. Brilliant. Thank you so much. I can just see a few questions um, about transferring from another university. So that's not what we're talking about. OK, we're actually just talking about the transfers when you come into Maynooth via the CEO in first year and then um, going into one program such as arts and then transferring over to um, a, a specialized degree like law and business in second year or computer science. OK, Um if you've any particular kind of queries on that from coming from another college, if you could email us on transfers at mu.e. So transfers at mu.e. Um, another kind of question there is just um, the support for students with learning dif uh, disabilities. If you could actually, I will put the contact there, the access office, they'd be able to help you um, with that one. It's just, we just want to use the time here to kind of chat to the students, but I'll give you the contact for them in the chat box, okay? Um, there's a question here. What's the difference between MH101 
and studying business law directly if you get the points I don't really understand and what the students are saying here is that there's there's two options okay you can go in directly to arts okay and you could you can study kind of the combination of subjects so I'd recommend going to that talk to kind of study that to learn a bit about that or their specialized degrees going straight into that to business law and the points can be higher for that as well so sometimes people will go in the arts route then pick subjects that they can transfer into in second year so that's an automatic transfer so you go in in your first year to arts and then in second year you go into the mh 501 mh 404 the the specialized degrees so you kind of so this is so this is you first year arts this is first year specialized business and law they go on to second year instead of going on with the second years uh, in arts here, you just automatically transfer into their class there. Okay, so I hope that answers. And if you have any more questions on that kind of specific one, you could go to the talks for business and law and they'll probably be going on to that as well. Um, so yeah, this one's probably good for you. So traveling from Dublin um, every morning, you commute, don't you? So just tell us a little bit about your commute. Yeah, so I'm actually based in Swords. Uh, so it is a bit of a commute. So I'd say like over an hour and a bit. Um, but it's not too bad. Like I enjoy having the opportunity to like rest in on in the mornings in and then like wind down on my way home. Um, in terms of like getting in, like Maynooth is very accessible. There are buses, there are trains. Um, you can either get a bus or a train from town, or you know, there's multiple train stations that connect to Maynooth. So I wouldn't say it's very difficult. I think it's just for the people that don't like waking up in the morning like me. It might be <laughs> that area, but other than that, like you'll be grand. You've just completely outed yourself now, Sneil. Yeah. <laughs> um, ben, here's one for you. For media studies, what do you learn exactly in the first year? And are there any subjects necessary to help with the course? And then work placement and a choice to do a year abroad. Okay, I'll try and get through this quickly. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of questions. <laughs> it's like four questions in one. Love it. Uh, well, <laughs> I'm leaving by. Um, no. um, okay, so um, media studies is a very broad degree, especially kind of in first year. Um, so when you come in, um, you're essentially it's a specialized arts degree. So 50% of your course is going to be media studies, and the other 50% is going to be two other subjects. So in first year last year, I studied it with sociology and marketing essentially. Um, and then when you go into second year, you can either do a double degree where you do 50% of media with one of the other subjects from first year or a major minor, which I do, where you do um, like 75% of media and then 25% of the other subject. And specifically in first year, the degree is mainly split into the media side of the degree anyway, is mainly split into three parts, uh, theory, production and design. So um, you kind of just do the basics of each of them in first year. So production is um, mainly film production and uh, film and TV production you do in first year. Um, but then when it goes on, you also look at like um, documentary, radio and stuff like that. Um, design um, is kind of broad ranging design. So graphic design, user design, um, a little bit of game design, which you can start to do in second year, but um, you kind of just do the basics in first year. And then the theory is looking at um, media studies uh, kind of in society, how it impacts um, different elements of society and kind of sociocultural things uh, with media. So that's kind of the basic um, basics of the first year course. And then when you go into second year, you get the opportunity to kind of specialize in things and choose uh, what exactly you want to do when you have more kind of modules to choose from. In terms of work placements, and um, work placements um, aren't offered through the media studies degree. Um, it's like media is like a very broad ranging uh, kind of field and stuff like that. Um, there are opportunities obviously like outside of college to do stuff they're kind of hard to find especially in, um you know sometimes um in ireland you know what i mean um if you're not in dublin and stuff like that could be sometimes hard to find because it is a specialized um kind of career area and stuff and um, so you can't do work placements but you can do a year abroad and um, so essentially in Maynooth, the majority of degrees are uh, three years and then if you decide to do a year abroad it essentially gets added on so then it becomes like a ba international essentially so um your third year then would be abroad essentially and um, you can essentially kind of choose what you want to do and stuff like that and look for what kind of media kind of course or stuff like that um, in a university abroad would um, suit you so yeah I hope that and are there any subjects uh, necessary to help with the course obviously with the fact that you get two other subject options in first year and then you get the option to bring one on in second year um, there are some very kind of popular options and you can have kind of fun um, with what you choose and also do something that might benefit what you want to go into. And um, it's so like I do marketing with mine and um, because I potentially kind of want to go into content creation and digital advertising and stuff like that. And um, 
user advertising design and stuff. So that's what I do. I know somebody who wants to go into like media filtration for the Gardaí and she does criminology with it. So there's a lot of options if you go and look at the arts degree and um, you can do kind of a majority of those subjects you can kind of do with the um, media studies degree. So, yeah. yeah. That's brilliant. Thank you so much, Ben. Um, accommodation. OK, let's do a quick accommodation. So, Peter, are you commuting or living around? Uh, commuting. Amazing. And then um, Ben, commuting or lived on campus or lived in the area? Um, at the moment, I commute from Dublin and um, from city centre. But um, last year, um, I lived on campus. So if you want me to talk about that or the process of getting it. I can. But, yeah, we can go on to that. Ellen? Uh, so I live on campus, uh, too far away to commute. I'm afraid I'm from Mayo. Um, so I live on campus and I have done since first year, first, second and third year on campus. Amazing. Grania, what about you? Um, I commuted from three uh, for three years and now I'm living on campus. Fabulous. And then Snea? I've commuted all four years. Amazing. So if anyone has some kind of questions there that they want to put about kind of accommodation options, I know one is how did you get your accommodation? The accommodation is done kind of it's it's a lottery system, isn't it, guys, that you you apply for a kind of the morning it goes live. So anyone that's applying CAO, typically what the accommodation office do is that they um they kind of start the competition after the CEO off, first round offers have gone out. Um, so if you have an offer, you can you can kind of enter that, but you can check that with the residence office on residence at mu.ie. Here's a really cool question that I think is brilliant for everyone. So what is the Maynooth University atmosphere overall? How has your experience been so far with staff, classmates and the area? Who wants to take that one? Peter, yeah? Uh, yeah, I could say because um... I'm academic rep for the engineering, so I know a bit about that as well. But um, yeah, I think it's really good overall. Um, professors and students, of course, all get along grand. And professors are usually always there for uh, people in courses. If they need to answer any questions, you can send them emails or go to their office and stuff like that. And um, yeah, the, the MSU is great for interaction between professors and the university um uh say president and the management in university because the msu or the uh, yeah, students union yeah they have uh, academic reps and lots of different stuff going on like student senate and all of that all of those things so uh yeah there's 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 always if you have any problems if a students have any problems there's always you can go to the academic rep and usually all the courses I think at least for engineering my course we have a group chat between the students so um, there's good communication there um yeah I think that's pretty much it the, the university is good in communication for I know they're having some changes for uh, plans for building on campus so they communicate that stuff to students and uh, yeah, students unions go for all that stuff. Amazing. Thank you so much, Peter. Anyone else like to take that question? What's, um? have you guys found it like easy to make friends? Do you feel like you have a community on campus, Um, societies, anything like that? Ben, were you going to kind of come in there? Yeah, I might as well. Um, what do you call it? Um, yeah, obviously I said I kind of came to the news because um, of the atmosphere when I first came here. And I do really feel like... Um, you can immediately kind of get a sense for the atmosphere and stuff like that when you come. And I think that really continues throughout your degree. Um, if I was just describing it, like, I just think it's a really like fun place. Like, it's a very diverse place too. Like, I feel like I meet such a, a wide range of people and that's kind of even reflecting the fact that there's so many combinations of like courses and subjects and stuff that you can do that people are on just such different like paths career-wise, but also there's just like a really diverse sense of people and um, in all kind of you know ways of saying it and um, and as like Peter was kind of saying like um I do a lot of SU stuff too I'm deputy chair of um student senate um, and SU is definitely a good place other than just clubs and societies there's so many clubs and societies I can't really keep track of them honestly every year there's, <laughs> there's more that's a lego society now there's all sorts of things and um, so those are really great as well to get involved whether it's like the SU where it's kind of student representation and stuff like that or whether it's um fun stuff like you know kind of sports things um, there's a real like there's just so many aspects I feel like I kind of go on forever like anyone could but um, yeah it's just a, a really fun place you know what I mean and um, we're really nice kind of diverse range of people and stuff so yeah 
Amazing. And there's another question here. Um, are uh, clubs and society, is it something you would suggest to everyone to join? Sorry, I'm running the unmute button. Um, oh, wait, do you want me to answer? Yeah, or? you can take it, Ben. Yeah, yeah go on. Um, wait, what was the question again? Would you uh, recommend you anyone? Would you recommend to everyone to join clubs and societies? Yeah, um, honestly, there's so many. There's something for, for everyone. Um, you know what I mean? Um, and even as you go on in your degree, you'll like find out about new ones and you'll like join new ones across the stuff. Like there's sometimes still ones that I'll be like going to events for and I'll say it to a friend and a friend like that exists. Like this is society for that. You know what I mean? So there's just such a, a really broad range of stuff. And no matter what your kind of interests are um, and stuff or what your hobbies are, you'll find something that you'll enjoy. And even if you're just going to like meet people or stuff like that, you know, even if you're you hate sports or you know what I mean, you don't have you're not very like um agile or stuff like that and you're going to trampoline and breaking your arm you know what I mean and um, even if you're just going to meet people and stuff like that it's, it's really really good so yeah amazing thank you so much and I've met the I've met the students before and I've asked them obviously kind of what clubs and societies are involved in like and they're all so different like Ellen's involved in the chamber choir so Ellen's an amazing singer and she sings this chamber choir and they do really cool things even look up their Instagram Peter's part of like the Electronic Engineering Society. Grania then is part of Muck, isn't it, Grania? Which is like canoeing and kayaking. Again, super cool. Um, Sneha then is in the Law Society, but you were also in the Indian Society before as well. Where do you remember that from last year? And then Craig is part of the Athletics Club. So you can just see like everyone's studying different things and everyone's interests are so different, which I think is really really cool like even like that Ben talk about the experience he's gained in the student senate and also Peter from as an academic rep like that experience is amazing and what was done to you and obviously it's amazing that you all feel encouraged that you can put yourselves out there and you can put yourselves for these positions as well and yeah it's just really cool um I know we're kind of coming towards the end of the session soon and again there's a lot of questions kind of coming in if we don't get them now, if you'd still like to put them to us, please email us on admissions at mu.ie or to our Instagram, Minutio, and we can get back to you there. I'm just conscious we probably won't have enough time to go through all the questions. Just want to say a quick thing about the open days. The next one um, will be on in April. So um, it'll be later on in April. 22nd seconds is the date um, that it's scheduled for. So who attended an open day before? before they came came to me Peter yeah yeah, yeah I want to lots of people yeah, in the chat who joined us as well so everyone's been to an open day before amazing um I would highly and I'm sure the students would you all really recommend attending an open day before you decide on studying a course yeah there you go big nods <laughs> so do please sign up for that and the the sign up form for that will be live tomorrow um my kind of final piece is I want to go around to all of kind of our um, panelists today. And I wanna ask you for one piece of advice that you would give to prospective students that are currently in six years sitting there even cert and what would you like to say to them? So I'll go for the end. So Craig, we'll start with you if that's okay. Uh, yeah, that's no problem. Um, I would say one of the, the best pieces of advice uh, I could give, if even if I was talking to my previous self, <clears throat> would always just to be asked questions. Um, you see the chat boxes on our on our mini website even either just keep asking questions about the course the more you know the less stress you'll be and yeah that's something i didn't do when i was in sixth year and <clears throat> for, even for likes of me i'm happy to answer any question that anyone ever gives to me if that makes the student's life easier for choosing a business subject or even just general information just ask questions to students even your guidance counselors will know uh, some answers just keep asking questions Sorry, I had to find my own mute button. No, that's amazing. Thanks so much, Craig. Um, Grania, what about you? Um, my piece of advice is just think about what you're doing and think about what you're interested in. And there will always be something that you are interested in doing, even if it's not um, it's something that you think you'd be interested in at the time. I came here to do criminology and I sat criminology, love criminology, but I figured I, when I'd done law, I figured I love law more. And that is a perfectly okay decision to make. So just remember that the CAO isn't everything in the world. Again, brilliant piece of advice. Ellen, what about you? Um, I would really say, you know, get stuck in. Like Craig said, ask questions, you know, use your own interests to guide you. But then once you're here, 
you know, talk to everyone you can, get involved in any clubs or societies, because everyone is in the same boat as you in first year. Everyone kind of comes in and they're timid and they're thinking, oh, well, I make friends, <laughs> you know. Um, but it's it's only through embracing that and through really um, you know, getting involved that uh you'll you'll find that community and those people that uh will make the atmosphere uh, of Manuth really suit you. Amazing. Thank you so much, Ella. And Snea, what about you? Um, I would say to just take it day by day. I feel like that's something that I definitely didn't do in sixth year. So if I had the chance to go back, I would definitely take it one day at a time. Because at the end of the day, like looking back now from final year to first year or to even sixth year in secondary school, like I just know the way it's worked out hasn't been the way I I thought of or the way that I hoped. Like it's just been better than that. So I like just to take it one day at a time and to know that to trust that it'll all come together in the end. Yeah, I love it. Thank you. And um, Peter, what about you? Uh, yeah, I definitely agree with everything that people have said there. Um, something, though, uh, maybe that gets overlooked is just the commute time. I think make sure make if you're going to choose a university, make sure the commute is manageable. Uh, it depends on the type of person you are, but, you know, maybe you could even do a test commute by getting the train to the university from wherever you live or the bus just to see how it is because if your commute is too long or like you know upwards of two hours which I know some of my friends even had to do that it can really impede on your studies and uh, social life as well so make sure it's nothing too crazy and uh, yeah try and test it out before to see how how you manage with a commute another great piece of advice thanks so much Peter and finally Ben what about you yeah so um it's probably kind of well it's been said already um but yeah definitely like um as they kind of said like take it one day at a time just you know chill um it really feels like the world is kind of ending when you're in sixth year and you have to make all these big decisions and stuff like that I know it's easy to look at us here when we're like graduating in a year you know we kind of have our our choices made and like our careers in our heads and stuff but like we're like children too practically you know what I mean like it, it still feels a bit like you know we like the world is looming and like we're too young to make decisions and stuff so when you get into college like you're around people who are also maybe unsure what they want to do, who need to kind of take a year, then transfer, you know, change their mind or stuff like that to figure out what they want to do. So even though it kind of seems like, you know, one world kind of ends with CEO and then it's like this whole new like adult world, that's not really the case. You know what I mean? And um, it, it's more seamless than you kind of think and everything works out in the end. And then also, as kind of Ellen said, definitely get stuck into stuff, you know. Um, I don't know a single person in college who doesn't like like making new friends like there's at least a dozen people I've met just in the past semester even though I kind of come out of first year and been like okay I've made my friends like you're constantly meeting new people in college and stuff like that and making new friendships and bonds and stuff like that so um definitely get stuck in because people want to know you just as much as you want to know them so yeah amazing I love that as well it's true it's kind of the best time of your life to meet as many people as you can who will then become as well connections later on down the road as well and um, so thank you so much everyone for joining tonight thank you so much to all of our amazing student ambassadors thank you Peter thank you Ben thank you Ellen thank you Gronia thank you Sneha and thank you Craig we really appreciate the time you guys gave as well this evening to speak to prospective students and um, again if anyone has any questions I've kind of said it again and again but the Minutio and the Instagram and um, the other webinars now from the academic departments will begin so what that entails is um talks from the from the different kind of departmental um kind of offices and if you want to learn more just get a taste of this evening and then don't forget that our uh, open day will be taking place soon and we would love to see you there as well and you know then you can come and you can um chat to everyone kind of more directly and our student ambassadors work at those open days as well so if you want to speak to someone face to face you can kind of chat to them there if that's what you prefer so thank you so much thanks everyone and have a lovely evening and best of luck with the rest of the CEO information evening thank you so much bye